I'm Steve Malkmus, and I'm in Pavement, and this is the 25th anniversary uh, celebration, social media explosion for this album. It came out in 1994, and this is... 2019, that makes 19 plus 6, 25 years. That's why, right? Are we doing it? Are we going to reissue and stuff and like have. No, no we're just going to talk about it. <laughs> it's, it's always in print because it's so good. You don't have to reissue it. <clears throat> it's like Dark Side of the Moon for Gen X. We rehearsed in uh, Brooklyn in the Old Williamsburg or medium Williamsburg, pre-internet Williamsburg, and I had heard from a friend of mine, Tom Sargal, that this band on Matador called Belter Space, their album sounded quite huge. They said that they knew this guy there that had a room and like a nice Studer tape machine. He worked at a secondhand gear store that was also based in the same building, and that it was really cheap, and why don't we go check it out? So we went there and it was, he kind of also slept in there, he had like a futon, but he was never there. He was just like a takeout ordering freak named Mark and uh, Mark Venezia. And he said, like, it's slamming. I mean, I remember that. He said the place was slamming. And that sounded good to me. That's where we recorded it. So we plugged directly into the tape machine and just got a, just a nice big raw sound. The f album before that, was sl called Slandon and Enchanted, and we had done that in Stockton, where I went to high school. And we had gone back there to potentially maybe record there. But Gary had moved his studio that was in a, his garage. He moved into like a real studio in a different spot. And we started to work there, and it just wasn't coming together. We broke up with Gary, um, and then I got a new drummer, this guy named Steve West, who... Uh, he was in the band for the rest of the time and had a rehearsal space in his house. And I just started jamming, just Steve and I. Um, and I was like, okay, Steve's a drummer now. That's where we rehearsed. But we did do some basic demos. I think they've been, you've heard them if you're a pavement head on some of the reissues, um, which I haven't heard, but I think they're on there. Um, <laughs> and yeah, so we did that. And the key to that album, this album, was mixing it. We were just planning to mix it ourselves. I remember Matt Sweeney, maybe you know him, he was in Chavez, and he was our friend, and he said that Ch Chavez had been working at this place on 14th Street. He said it's just $50 an hour, and it's really cool, you should just go there. And it was a place where like Teenage Fan Club recorded their uh, bandwagon-esque, and Elliot Sharp. So, and what turned out was that there was a house engineer there named Bryce Goggin, and he's, he just miraculously appeared there and said, I'll help you. And then he took it over and he mixed, he made it sound uh, much better. It was going to sound maybe a little like Slant and Enchanted mixing wise if we were doing it ourselves. And he made it sound more like with, he used actual reverbs and he re recorded some drums that we we didn't do it correctly. We added things, and that's it. Things were moving fast. I was more just excited that we got some attention, I think. Oh, someone's listening. This is really fun. There wasn't any uh, internet yet, and so you would maybe read one article in Spin Magazine or something, and it didn't really seem real. I mean, there were some big concerts, like Roseland. It's, I felt a little bit like, I'm not ready for this. <laughs> That's whenever I felt. I would go ahead and do it, but I was just like, this is bizarre. We're playing a, a lot of people here and being on MTV a little bit. There was MTV had a big sway back then. It was like the breeders are in the buzz bin and stuff. So it was like, you can get in the buzz bin. Remember the buzz bin? I was hoping to get in there. Festival gigs at Reading and stuff. That felt like, oh, we're just like a rock band now. Like, uh, Oasis is playing before us, you know, what's going on here? That didn't last long. I mean, I'm kind, I'm kind of like, make, not making fun, but like taking yucky music that like kind of made me feel sick a little bit, but like trying to make it good. Like classic rock of Silent Kit or the Eagles with 
range life. So it was like bands I hated sometimes. I mean, I still do that now. I still, yeah, I don't know why I'm compelled to do that. But bands I like, I mean, I like Can a lot. The Stop Breathing has a Can uh, element to it. It was more like Poco and the Eagles and Jackson Brown, who, who I do like Jackson Brown. But, you know, I was thinking more along those lines of Malibu, David Geffen, Range Rovers or something. Um, privileged country rock. But the, some, I mean, it's, there's heart in it still. I'm not saying it's all about, it's like, put your, put your um, heart into it still.